In my last video I showed you how to replace a damaged USB-C port on a PS5 controller. But after the replacement the controller still wasn't working and I couldn't figure out why. I'm back again and this time I determined to figure out what went wrong. I will be comparing the faulty controller step by step with the working one. I will be taking a closer look at the internal components and see if I can spot the problem. Will I finally be able to fix the controller and get it working again? Join me in my latest revisit video and let's find out together. Hi guys, Marcus here. Let's find out why it's not working, why isn't it charging. Maybe we can measure around with this good one. Here's just the issue with the left analog stick. If you want a video about changing this here, let me know in the comments. Then we could try this in the future. So let's disassemble this and see if we could measure something. So let's start reconnect the battery and let me, let me show you that it's working. So we put it here. It looks also filthy. I think all gaming devices are just filthy. Yeah, and you can see blue light. That's a good sign. Let's check if it's taking a charge. Log it in. And what we see is that we are not able to see much. But the battery, the original battery that came with the good controller. Let's check this one here. Okay, see, so now it's charging. So this battery is just full. Now let's see how the faulty one behaves. Maybe I can mark the batteries. Let's call it F for faulty and here a G for good. So that's our faulty one. That's a replaced USB-C port. Check what is happening. And as you can see, 0. Well, no, you can't see. Now you can see. 0. 0.08. So that's not much. What is causing it? Let's see if we could figure that out. Could be a rabbit hole, which I think there is no way around. Here we go, down the rabbit hole. What? Let's disconnect those cables here from the rumble motors so now we can lift it out of this prison let's probe around the chips on ground i will use those points here and if you're not familiar in diet mode you can see the voltage drop so if the component just gives us a voltage drop that means it's not shorted so with a capacitor for example we should have one side with a continuous beep so to ground and one side with a short beep so if both sides would be beeping of a capacitor that would be an indicator that something isn't right that looks so far good so let's see, the battery connector is this one over here. So the question is, what is the charging I see? If I remember correctly, I've seen a video from Tronics Fix where he is reflowing this chip here. And this makes the controller working again. So I mean, I think that's something I would try. I mean, why not? We have nothing to lose. Let's shortly check around. I think this one here is a crystal. I'm not sure how to check if the crystal is okay. I mean, high likely when our USB C just refill the joints. I think I was tinkering around after after the last little bit. If those data points, I see the different voltage drops. If this is directly connected with the shit. That would make perfectly sense. So if here is something not right, we would of course see another another values at the outcome here. On this side there are literally no no chips that would make sense where this or those lines are connected with. So it must be this side here. Let's try to reheat this chip. Unfortunately really big chip. So let me put a 
wider lens on my on my microscope that you have a wider view angle yeah now we can nearly see now we can see the whole shit but as a drawback you see the lighting is not that good because we are not that yeah that deep or that near to the chip and the light will yeah spread around and it doesn't look that nice so what I will try to do, we will heat it, then when it's heated I will try to slightly nudge it and hope that I won't ruin it. If I nudge it too hard and I move it, then it's a BJA chip, you know. Those kinds of chips do have, I don't know, hundreds of little tiny dots under it. So it's not like, like those chips here. This one, for example, you can see all the connections from the outside, you know? Well, this one, there are no connections from the outside. They are all under this chip, all along. And yeah, so we are unable to check them without taking it off. And then you need to reball it to take it back. So that would be bad and nearly impossible, but yeah. Let's find out. I see that we do have here a connector, so obviously I'm not interested in burning it, so let me see. Maybe we can put some captain tape around it. So let's see. Let's get all around flux. So I will go with full heat, that means 500 degrees C and 120 airflow. So both full. And let's see if we can accomplish something. Just warm up the area a bit. I should have used a wider nozzle. We'll put some more flux. Very important to have flux under the chip so that we won't mess up the F connection. Okay, not sure if maybe there was some glue around the chip. I haven't checked for that to be honest. So it could be that it's not moving and it's all liquefied. And that's the reason why I can't match it. See, it's not moving, so... But bubbling is always a good sign that the solder should be liquefied. If the flux is, is bubbling. And let's cool it down and come with a, some kind of cooling pad. So yeah, but maybe I need to remove the nozzle next time or take a take one with a wider nozzle because it's a big chip So I'm not completely sure if I was able to reflow it correctly. Okay, so I'm not sure if we damaged here something, but Yeah, maybe that should have been my last resort, but yeah, okay now we We've done it. So let's try if something changed Turning on And see it's a slightly different value, but have I now shorted something? That's the question. Okay, but there is no no light here. I think if it would charge, this LED or some LEDs should light up, and that's not the case. So let's redo this with, with a good one. Okay, this one here, yeah, I should have checked this one first. So I just looked it up, and this chip here, the DA9087 is the power management chip or USB power management chip. So this would be more likely our problem. I mean, we just checked this area for shorts and there was no short. What I will try is to remove this one and check if the values here change. Okay, let's do that. And we have still the wider lens on. So just tell me what you like more. Do you like more the narrow field? of you but with yeah more clear image or do you like more this view where you can see more but it's not that good yeah it's not that bright or, or not that clear just tell me I mean, i'm very curious because i'm always struggling what's the best lens let's remove this chip this time i won't use captain tape here for this thing i will just try to point the apple in the other direction hope that it works The chip removed. Now let's measure again. Oh, that's surprisingly hot this area. So diet mode. Ground. And so it wars a fine. So you can see now there is no more connect. So A8. 
Okay, that's strange. Oh, well, that's definitely a different value still. Let me get the other controller. So if we compare it again with a good one. So A8 A was now 173. We do have here an OL. So this is definitely the right value. I have another PS5 controller laying around and it's showing the same. So here is no connect or over limit or whatever you want to call it. And the A5 is our one. 73. That's very strange. Why is that flipped? I'm not sure if it's really a big deal, but yeah, I mean, there must be a different. So it's not related to that shit, otherwise we would see another value, don't we? And what we could do is swap this chip here, for example, from the good controller to this one here. It's interesting, it's a complete another warp revision, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Those two ribbon connectors are different. That's a black one, and the other one is white. Yeah, and we have slightly different revisions. And this one is saying 45921, and this is saying 45911. Oh, we don't want to, to get this controller board out. Let's, let's check if I'm able to remove the chip. It could be really the main chip. I mean, think about it. The, the completely part was totally messed up, so it was falling apart. So the chance that we do have a big, a big short inside the USB-C port is very high. If there are some lines directly connected with the main processing unit, so this one here, so this here is the main chip, the ARM. Yeah, that would probably game over, of course. So I mean, we could try to swap this, why not? But not sure if I'm able to do this, cause that's a really big ship. And I have never done this before, but yep. Yeah. First, let's remove this one here. So this one here is the maybe faulty one. Let's put it here. And so you need to line up the chip with this point and the arrow, and then you're good to go. Put some flux, get some leaded solar on my chip. When you are grabbing an IC, it is very important that the tweeter won't reach the end of the IC chip, because if so, you are not able to place it, and if you drop it then, it will blow away by the hot air. And now we go with 400. So that's when you're lazy. So don't be lazy. Put protective tape on. Nah, okay. Yeah, let's check this in a moment. But no big deal with the ribbon cable connector. Around the edges. Okay, now to the problematic capacitor or inductor. Yeah, I think there's too much flux now around, so the cap and tape won't stick, but let's try anyway. Now I switch to a finer nozzle. We'll let it solder at this joint and here. It's hard to tell here. I'll try to clean it. And I think this side I will go over again. Okay, and I went a bit too wild with my soldering iron, so you see I just slightly scratched the the traces, but they are still connected, they are just leaded, and there's just a, some kind of... There's just some solar mask missing, but it's not a problem. I'm not sure if this in the middle is connected or not. Okay, well they are not connected. So, but I don't think that this was the failure. Oh, 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 what is that? Oh my goodness. Ah. Shoot, have a look here. There is a component. Ah, oh, okay, so let's see if I can spot with just one fill look. Looks like I've blown multiple ones. Oh man, that would be more or less bad. So okay, I think we got all of them. I just disconnected the other board because I would like to compare where I could have blown away a component. So that's here our good controller. I mean, we could try again. So what do we measure? So A5. Nothing. And A8. So it's still reversed. Why ever? Not sure if it's an issue or why it happens. So, but okay, we do have the new chip, our IC chip on here. I mean, what should go wrong? Let's put it in, power it on. And... Nothing. 
So I don't think that our other chips are responsible for this issue. So as far as I could research it, so this is our main microprocessor. So the whole brain is in this chip, the biggest one. So I assume that this one is faulty. Then we have the power IC that I've mentioned. Then we have here, yeah, that should be the, the real tech chip, ELC5524. That's for audio and voice signal processing. Well, the only one left is an audio amplifier, this one here. And I don't think that these are our problems regarding to this issue. So I'm still assuming it is this chip. Let's quickly compare if you can see any different side of the flux messengers on the other side. I mean, we can do some measurements. Let's first measure the good thing, or the good one. Why not? Red probe on round, let's measure. Here we have 0.45. Nothing, nothing. Oh, okay, so 0.45 and 0.45. Faulty board. 45. So that seems to be good. Hmm. Yeah, what else? How about this one here? 041. Oh! And this is shorted. Yeah, okay, so we definitely have a problem here. So, not sure if the problem is after I have tried to reflow this or before. I think we should give it a try to reflow it again. Oh, I'm not sure it was too far right on this side. Okay, let's just cool it down. I mean, it's worth liquefying. What we could check if the short is still present. I mean, if it's done, okay, good sign. If it's still there, yeah. Then high likely this chip is one of the fault, or it is the main fault. I don't know. Yeah, you can hear. So high likely the main chip is just damaged. In the meantime, we just put the power management chip from the faulty board to this one here, to the good one. So that's our good board, smart blue, and the other one is red. Okay, here we now have the power IC of the faulty board. Let's see what's happening. Okay, you see it's charging. So the IC was definitely fine. So this one is this one from the good one, and this one here was the faulty one from the faulty board. So this ship was not the problem. Yeah, so I'm really into that the main ship is damaged on our faulty one because this also handles the USB connection and communication. So I think there is no way around, we need to swap that. Yeah, the worst case happened, or the ship just flew around. There is one component missing. This one here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm able to spot it. Yeah, anyway. Let's try to clean up the mess a bit. Let's check if our short is gone. And it is gone. Yeah, let's first clean up the, the whole balls here. Okay, and during the removal, my iron laid down again this connector. <laughs> yeah, so you have to be so careful when you're doing such things, because sometimes you're angling and you're not aware there's the, there's the connector in the way, and yeah. So, but let's check again if something changed in the readings. So, A5, no connect, A8, 173. So, what was the good board?
I don't get that really. So just flip A8 and A5. Yeah, I think I will think about next steps and maybe ordering a new main ship or trying to get rid of this here. Oh no, sorry. This one, reballing it and try to put it on our faulty board. <sighs> well, that's a lot of effort. The only thing that we could do to prove it's really this chip, let's take it off this one, reball it and try to place it on the faulty board. I just looked up how much it would cost to buy a replacement chip and that's that's not very economically. Yeah, we'll show you the prices. So yeah, let's see if we are able to remove the good one here. Yeah, let's try as much heat as possible to pump into this ship to get it off as quickly as possible. Yeah. Oh, here, you can see when I light, slightly angle it, you can see the connection. Look at that. Nice. So the next step is, yeah, to get new bolts on this little thing. So I haven't really done this before, just for smaller chips, and I'm not sure if I was successful with it. So, yeah. Let's see. So the first thing we definitely need to do is putting flux. I will smash it with my finger. So the reason for that is first of course flux helps to solder and it will hold the balls in place. Okay, now the question is what is the right size of the balls? Okay, let's see, he has 055. I think that's a pretty good size. Yeah, let's go with 055 and hope that this is okay. We'll put it on something like this here. Because when the balls are flying, uh, flying around, they will be catched. Mm. And let's see. Uh, that's much, much too much. So what I will do now, position each ball one by one at its place. if it's the right size so and this I'm doing now for the whole board or the whole IC wow this was a really mediative process so and everybody just thinking this was the worst part it's coming now because now I need to tune in my hot air station that I won't blow all the way all those position balls and get the temperature right that they just connect with the solar pads underneath. Whew. Okay, so yeah, let's see. Let's go with 420 and airflow at. And I think an important part is to remove the nozzle. So we won't use any nozzle so that we won't streamline it too much to one point. Not all of them looks perfectly fine. Yeah, maybe the size wasn't right, um, as I told you. Yeah, it should be fine, I think. Good, good, good. So as you can see, there's the mark for the orientation. Oh, no, sorry, it's not the orientation. Oh, man, that would have been perfectly a disaster. That's just for placing the chip, so it needs to be inside all these little edges. And here is our indicator. So it must be like this. So anyway, we need to put flux. Wish me luck. Maybe it's even easier without the without the microscope in this case. So what I will do is try to align the chip perfectly or as good as I can in those mentioned edges. Yeah, I'm just scared about this connector here again when we do apply the heat from above. Let's use some aluminum tape for this. So we'll go with 500 degrees. But just 60 airflow and let's try to hit it from above. No, that's not right. Yeah, damn it. 
no thing that I haven't aligned it correctly. Okay, let it cool. So it's a good idea to use sometimes aluminium tape to protect some components. Okay, so fresh let it solder it on. There's our capacitor. Let's check if the short is still present after this change. That's good. Now well, maybe we have done something right. Okay guys, I think that's the moment of truth. Okay, let's see. Battery on, in. And plug it. Same story. What a shame. I attempted to re-solder the power IC and swapped a nearby component by the battery connector from the working board to the faulty one, but it didn't help. Up on closer inspection, the main chip appears to have bolts touching each other, likely due to using an incorrect bolt size 0.55mm instead of maybe 0.4mm and my lack of experience in soldering BGA chips. I am confident the main chip was always the issue. To troubleshoot charging issues, replace a power IC. If the controller doesn't respond, consider replacing the main chip. If you like seeing me failing or sometimes succeeding, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. This will help me a lot with growing this channel. Have a heart for broken devices and give them a second chance. Hope to see you soon, stay healthy and until next time, bye!